Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Um, today is part one of my Droy Decker build series. So it's this little guy, but in full size version. So this is a little model I did, I found online. And I wasn't happy with the size. So that's a 200% increase. <laughs> so it's only a tiny one, but I want a full size one. So we're gonna build a full size one. So follow along with the, um, the different parts of the series. I'll be going for as I, as I make it, I'll, I'll pull, pull out a video. That way you can build it with me. Okay, let's go guys. Okay guys, before we get started, you don't want to miss any of this build, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and while you're down there, hit the like button as well. That'd be much appreciated. And if you have any comments to make, whether they be good or bad, telling me I'm doing it the wrong way, or I'm doing a good job, uh, just leave the comments down below. I read every single one of them. Be good to hear from you. Okay guys, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing, is um, you've got to get the droid part. So I get it from these guys, Droid Division. They're on Etsy. They make some amazing droids. If I flip through, you'll see all these droids. These are life-size droids. So if you have a look at, um, I'll just pop a picture up now. So these are the ones I've done so far. Some of them are, the bigger ones are 100%. The smaller ones are like half size. And some of them are 25%. So you got 25%, 50% and full size ones in this pile here. Okay, so he's got bundles in here. As you can see, this is the second page. He's even got weaponry and stuff. And he adds to it every oh, three to four months. So that's how long it takes him to um, create the files. And they're very detailed. So this is the info sheet that comes with it. And that's the droid there. And you can see he tells you all the bolts and hardware and stuff you need to get. Um, you need aluminium poling, so this is just curtain rod type stuff you can get from any um, hardware store. So they get put in between the filament joints and stuff to make it a lot stronger. So it goes through everything you need to do, detailed instructions, how to put it together, things to watch out for, um, what um, thickness and and infill ratings they recommend for the, for the droid. Um, so lots and lots of stuff in here to do it now. I will say, <laughs> when I was looking online, they said it took 38 rolls for one of the guys that was um, a beta tester for the model. So he gets a few of his mates and stuff to beta test it for him, put it together, just um, so he can make adjustments and stuff before it goes out. So um, one of them said 38 rolls. Now that's gonna vary depending on how much infill you put in and how many walls you make. But as a whole, if it's supporting weight, you want about a four or five walls on it, and that's printing at 0.2. Um, mill of layer height, um, so you want about four or five rolls, especially on the legs, and probably about the. Well, I usually do about 20% infill, but some go up even higher than that. Um, keep in mind this one doesn't move, so if you're making your, some of the droids in there that actually move it, um, I don't think I don't think Droid Division does it, but there's a guy called um, Mr. Brad Brad Bradley Bradley Bradbury. I'll put the links in down below anyway. He does an R2-D2 one, he's the big guy for the R2-D2 droid, and he does one with parts that move. So the head spins around, you put um, scooter motors in the bottom of it, and you move it with a remote control. So that's pretty cool, I've made one of them. I haven't put it all together with all the electronics and stuff yet. I have them all, I haven't put it together. I'm gonna probably do a video about putting that, and put some of it together, but not all of it. So do another video about putting all that together and getting the damn thing working and getting it run across. There's a few videos out there, but might as well follow along my journey. But what I also do is where they've got the bolts and stuff that, I, that you saw in that little thing, I get these little kits from, I think I get, I get them from eBay, but Amazon sell them as well. So these are the furniture bolts that you get. And you just um, check in the descriptions about what sizes you need. But basically they're bolts and they have these little barrel nuts. As you can see the barrel nuts. Yeah, see the barrel nuts there? So that's so it can slide, you can slide that in a hole in the side and then put this in and you don't see it at all. It's not on the outside of the, of the model. It's hidden inside the model. So you can get them, just um, search for whatever, I think it uses M6, M6 furniture screws, um, or M6 um, hex screws, because they just need to have this sort of um, see this sort of hex normal um, allen key type thing 
and just whatever size you need. So he puts it all in the instructions of what ones you need. Now if you're building it of course at a lower scale, so if you're doing the 50% um, or 25%, the screw is going to be a different size. So keep that in mind. Um, and so are all the poles. So when I did mine at 50% at 50 um, I just sort of guesstimated a lot of it. Or I printed out one part for the leg and checked what sort of pole would, I took it along with me to, to the hardware store and I'm just shoving poles in there trying to see which ones fit. Um, so this one, that's a 19 inch pole. So this is for the, the proper size one. So this is part of the proper size one. Oh, it's part of a part because my printer did a layer shift. So something's got caught on it or knocked it or something or the dogs have knocked it and it had a layer shift right here and it started printing off here so I stopped it and pulled it off and then luckily for me if you can see it is right on the very corner of this of this little um, indent in here so I could line it up really precise or I just measured it I measured it as well got a rough idea of where it was and then I lined this little bit here up exactly and they are well, I'll try to go that one. Oh, spot. Must be, uh. oh no which way does it go oh that way sorry so it goes on that way so I'm just going to glue it together because I'm not going to waste any more filament with 38 rolls of filament together so I've done 20 rolls of filament so far and I haven't started the body yet so that's how it's going to go so I'm not too worried about it having glue here because it's going to have this damn pole sticking through it. And this pole gives it lots of strength and holds it together. For it. Okay. I'm going to jump around a bit. I thought that was my face. So I'm using a, a DJI Pocket. Um, Osmo Pocket. And they follow your face. You can track it on your face. And I'm going to leave my face around. Oh, look at that. See? You can see all the drill. Uh, it's part of my makings in there. Um, I've taken over my son's room. He's living with his girlfriend now, and I'm <laughs> using it to put all my droid stuff because I'm running out of room. Um, yeah, so buy the kits. A lot cheaper to buy the kits. Uh, like I said, Amazon. Um, I don't have affiliate links for them, so just go on Amazon, do a search. And um, the nuts are called barrel nuts. So it's got it all in the instructions. Anyway, he's even got um, a list of of places where you can buy. Um, the nuts and stuff from he's, he's listed a few places in America and uh, the UK. He's done the Australian ones. It was a place called Bunnings, but they no longer stock them. So hopefully your guys will. will but most hardware stores stock this sort of stuff. Um, okay, so let's go and have a look at how some of my prints are going. So at the moment here, I'm just I've just started printing parts. Um, I have three boxes of parts, and I've only done really the legs and just starting the the bit of the. Um, armor around the outside and the whole big body part I haven't even started yet because um, the only and I'm not using only Creality printers to print this because they're all, all my fast ones so I've got a K1 Max a K1C so they're the enclosed printers um, if anyone's familiar with uh, not familiar with the Creality ones it's uh, and we've got a bamboo it's just like the bamboo ones um, so I'm using K1 Max it's the big one it's 300 by 300 and then I've got all the rest about 220 by 220. So the K1C, I then got two Enders, an Ender 3V3 and an Ender 3V3KE. So those four printers uh, I'm using to print this entirely um, with Creality printers because that's what I've got the most of. And to be honest with you, um, my K1 Max outprints my bamboo as far as the smoothness and stuff. I know that's not the case with everybody, but I just happen to... Um, have a good damn good printer <laughs> so it's about on it's sort of on par with the with the bamboo but sort of just a little bit better in far as smoothness and stuff is concerned and it's a lot more compatible with different sorts of um with filaments i've done a few tests if you have a look in my um in my video list you'll see a few tests i've done between the bamboos and the um Creality. so i'm also using um Creality print 5 that's the latest slicer that Creality is coming out with um, i'm using that because um, on my Creality printers, on these new Creality printers anyway, um, it's producing smoother prints than Orca does. So, but that, and saying that, that's on the default settings because that, that all slices pretty much work the same. So depending on how you tweak them, you're going to be able to get the same result no matter which slice you're using. 
um, but um, on the default stuff so I don't have to change so the few little settings I change um, like distances between supports and stuff maybe make it a little tiny bit more um, so it's a bit easier to get off but apart from that I use the default settings and um, it's coming out really good so um, let's just pump off now and see how some of my prints are going okay let's go Okay guys, so these are all the parts for one of the legs. There's three identical ones of this. Jesus. So, um, put that over there. Okay, so there's three, there's one, two, three, four, five, six parts that are printed. As well, you'll need a 270mm length of 19mm tube. And you'll also need a 550 length of the same tube. Of this um, oval shaped, okay, of this oval shaped um, shower rail thing, it's um, 800. You need two 800 lengths, and it is 30 long by 15 wide of mil in millimeters. That's the proper way of doing it, guys. <laughs> okay, so first thing we need to do is is put the damn thing together. So basically, you've got Guys, wrong way. Tube go in like so. It's pretty easy to tell because you can see how they line up there. So that's going to be one of the foot. And then this will come up over like so. And it will join together like that. Okay, now we have to glue it in place. So what you want to glue is this bit on the end here. This bit going into the very end of this curvy one. So the very tip of the foot. You want to make sure the pole is glued in. So it doesn't um, come out like so. Okay, so we're going to put a bit of glue on that to glue that together. So once again, I'm using this glue. This glue. It's uh, what is it? Pseudo, pseudo glue, I guess. You can get it online. I get it in um, on eBay. They they do have them. I've got found a little hardware store just down the road from me which has them but the big hardware store doesn't that we have here in Australia the Bunnings Bunnings doesn't stop they stock the brand but not the actual okay so once it's up level I'm just going to spray it in place give it a sec to dry and that's not taken bugger As now <laughs> it's stuck in place now so that's good it's nice and level so then I'm just going to glue these in place while they're on the pipe here so that not really much to line up guys they do have um I'm doing it oh they have these things here that we had to print out and little guides to help sort of dowels to help put the um grab a couple They're not for strength, they're just to line them up. So just a little little dowel like this. I tuck one on each side here. That makes sure I'm getting line it up properly. Give the other side a bit of a spray. And I chuck them in. And that's on. Cool. Now, that's all I'm going to do there because if you ever want to move it, you're going to want to be able to pull it apart. So don't glue every single bit in place. Only the bits that need gluing. Next ones are these pipes or rails. Go in like so. Okay. 
Okay, and I need some more of those little blue. I'll just get them all out on here. Put one on each side there. Okay. Now, what I did first too, guys, is dry fitted the whole lot to make sure that they're all going to fit. And that's just going to fit over like the size, so I'm going to glue that bit in place. Don't be stingy with your glue, but don't be over zealous with it so then it's pouring out the sides when you put them together either. Push down. Okay, that's a good thing about this glue, it's, it's joined now. That's why I use it. Um, now, I do have a little hole in the side here where you can put some glue in to hold that in place if you want. So I might do that. That'll let glue soak in around that joint. side as well. Give it a spray. Okay. Get the lineup dowels in. Yep, okay. Put some more glue on. Run that out. Push it in. Oh. Last bit. No, that will go on this way. Like so. Then I've got a nice leg like so. I get some of them line up dowels in as well. I mean there's meant to be four in each joint. I'm just gonna put two in. They're not they're not giving it any strength, they're just um I suppose give a little bit of strength, but they work fine. Give us some glue. Spray. Doesn't need a lot of spray, it just needs to be covering, you know, just put a light mist over the surfaces. And then oh. Let's get that together. Okay, so there's the legs all done. Now it's got some little bits that go on there, but I've got to find them. So I'll do that later. So there's three of these guys, three of these. Now it's got a, um, a little circle bit that goes on there and there that act as like pretend knees type thing. So they will go on. Um, they are in the four boxes of stuff I have. I think this is a small one. That's, um, I've got four of these full of print. So let's see if we can find them. That'll be one of them. There's the other one. Three of each, for about three. One, two, three. There you go. Oh, that's, oh, that's the same. One, two. One, two, three. 
playing on there different. Ah, and there'll be six of each one there because three one three on each side. So these ones must be elbows actually. Three of it, so I've got I'm gonna have to print off another three each of them. I didn't read this right. So you can see how much stuff is in one box, yeah? There's four of these. Plus oh god. Oh. Okay, so as well as them, I'll go on this little one. You'll see on the on the bed here, all of this, not the very back stuff that you can see models at, but all this stuff is the body and stuff. There's two more legs that I haven't put together yet. So um, <laughs> there's lots, lots and lots to print. Okay, back on here. Okay, I'll show you what these ones do. Oh. Sorry, just got a back issue. Okay, so these are going to go, going to be one over there. They do have little line-up holes, I guess. I can put one in, line them up. Oops. So they'll go like so. And these ones, just fit on there like so. So you've got the nice um, covering, looks like a knee type thing. So that's pretty much the leg. Then this part at the end here goes into the body, which is all that stuff on the bed is the body. Um, so I'll glue these on and then um, I'll glue up all the other two legs. Then we can get on to the next part. Okay guys. Okay, so putting these ones together, so these ones that haven't, um, oh, <laughs> these ones where I've um, had a layer shift, basically I get the pole that's going to go in it, stick it in it, like so. Okay, so I put the pole in it, I then get this piece, I apply the uh, correct amount of glue. So I'm using a, um, a two-part, well, it's a, it's a glue with an accelerator. So basically it's a... Um, Super loop basically. Works pretty good, especially when there's a pole there. I think it's my accelerator, frame accelerator, and I'm using the pole to line it up. So, once I get it where I want it, I squeeze on down, push down, pull her off. So, as you can see, it's a nice clean joint. It needs a little bit of spacking or um, bondo, I guess you guys call it, but it's um, pretty strong here. Yeah? Okay, so that's um, oh, there's my there's my little baby one I did over there. It sits over there, reminding me of what I'm doing. Okay, so um, that's the best way that I found to to not have to throw the damn print in the bin because um, I stuffed up. <laughs> So basically I have a video that I've done about how I measure it up and what I do in, in the slicer to pull it down to the right height. Um, so go and watch that. Now what I do, what you usually do when you glue it is you have a little bit of an indent there. I should have left one. Oh, I've got one here. Okay, so I've got one here, guys. So if you have a look on here, you see how it's got a gap all through there? So what I use for the gaps, so I use this stuff. Ah, uh, this stuff. So it's, it's a basically wall filler. So when you get little dings and stuff on the wall, you just go and use the little spatula and spatula on. I don't use that. But what it is, is it's like a putty. See, so just a moist putty. If it dries out, just put water in, just mix it up and it all. But I've had this over for a couple of weeks and it's still. So I get a bit on my finger. 
and I get where the um, where the crack is there, and I just run it along, and then just get another finger, wet it so it doesn't stick to it, and just smooth it all out, and voila, it's all fixed up. And then once it dries, I give it a bit of a sand. So um, I get one that I've already done to show you how that goes. So here's one that I've already done, and you can see how got a bit of a ridge and stuff there. Oh, where's one that I'll probably do it on this side. Probably do some of this side here. That's um, a sandpaper. It's a bit of sandpaper like so, and I'll do it on this side. And I probably need a stronger sandpaper, but yeah, it's not for what we want to do. See that ridge? Um, probably can't. See the ridge there, but on here, come on, because it's white. Ah, there you go. See it here? It's all nice and smooth. Yeah. That's all it took. And inside that little circle bit there, I'll just do that. Because it's so soft, sand's really easy. When you get little bits like that, I use a little exacto knife. Yeah, there, got it. Cut like that. Just give that a little bit more sand, but you can see how easy it's sanded. And if I get some um, spray putty, that'll hardly need to sand it at all. Because if you have a look at the rest of it, I mean, I've got a few little lines up here on the second bit. Yeah, I can barely see. Come on, come on. See the how good these prints come out nowadays? This is straight off the printer. Now I've printed this at 0 0.2 layer height. I haven't gone on the 0.16 or the 0.12. Haven't needed to. Because the prints come out really well. I found all the overhangs and stuff um, come out a lot better on a 0 0.02, um, 0 0.2. Um, so I've been printing, I'm going to print the whole droid at 0 0.2. Um, and it seems to be coming out really well. But that's all I do. I use this glue. I use wall, wall putty, Bondo. Bondo is a lot harder. It, it, um, it sets a lot harder. So it, it's a lot more effort to sand it. And to be honest with you, all you understand is damn well paint it. The Bondo is not holding the thing together. That's what the glue is for. The Bondo is filling the gap. And this is made to fill gaps in walls. And it's got a little bit of flexibility, like walls shrink a bit and move so it's got a little bit of flexibility in there so it, it works really well um, so that's what I use to fill in all my gaps and stuff um, what else is there to tell you oh yeah the good thing about um, using all the Creality printers and using the same slicer so I'm using Creality, um, Creality Print 5 it's the latest one I've got out it's working really well but the good thing about it is where you've got um, holes like this that need to match up because there's going to be another part that goes on top of that. You can see by the, the I know by because these are dow holes to line up, and there's going to be poles coming through here. They need to line up exact because if they don't and they're out a bit, and you try and move it to hit the poles, you're going to, you're going to have a big gap either side. So I found that um, all my printers are lining up perfectly as well, which is really good. That's another thing you've got to look out for. So your first two little bits that you so sanding crap all over my desk um, the first thing you probably want to do when you're doing s uh, several printers to print something is just make sure when you print two bits that go together that they line up properly because they don't because you know you could have um, the, um, adjustments out a bit on one printer and it's just not printing exactly right so you just need to check that before you go and print the whole uh, droid and put it together and find out they're not matching up so make sure you do that um, when you're doing it okay so uh, I will see you in the next video, which will be um, coming up soon. I'm currently starting to print the body. So if you have this picture up here, <laughs> that's just the legs. Legs and arms. So uh, 
and that's uh, how many rolls of that? That's nearly 20 rolls of filament. So um, I should have the rest of it finished by probably the end of the week. Uh, that's all the body and stuff that's printing now. Uh, the only problem is I can only print it on the K1 Max because um, I don't want to. When he does the parts, he does ones that will fit might usually fit on an Ender, the Ender type bed, about a two two hundred ish type bed. Um, so most of the parts will fit on them, um, and some of them he's got bigger for the bigger printers, but then he also includes more files for the smaller printers but they're cut a lot more and there's a lot more joining and there's just a pain so I try to print when there's a big part they can be printed all in one or four instead of eight I'm going to do the four instead of eight or the whole thing all at once because it's just a lot easier it looks a lot nicer and there's less joints to to putty and sand and you, you get the idea so um that's why I'm going to do the body, as much of the body as I can in the K1 Max, so I have less joins in it. And um, hopefully in July, there's going to be the K2 Max, which is 350 by 350, um, which will be good. I've ha I do have a bigger printer, but it's one of the old slow guys. And the quality of the prints just isn't the same. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to stay to stick with the Creolids. Um, I've got some bamboos that are printing other stuff that aren't part of the droid. I use, I'm using them to print other stuff at the moment. Um, little, so these little things from Flexi Factory. I've got heaps of them I'm printing for a friend. So they do. So she, um, she works at a physio. She works at a physio centre, um, and they work with kids. So while well, the kids are waiting and stuff, and also they get them to do exercises and play with the dinosaurs and stuff. So I'm happy that they're doing that. Um, so I'm using the bamboo to print them off while I'm using the Creolities to print off the other stuff. Um, and the reason I didn't pick the bamboos to do the droid is because I don't have a big one. Plus I'm really happy with the Creality one. So anyway, there you go. Okay, so the next one will be hopefully more showing you more of the parts and starting to put parts together um, I have I'll probably start painting some too I'm coming hard whether to paint this one before I put it together um, there's two ways of doing it you can put it all together spray the whole thing in one color and then go through and tape it up and paint all the other bits but that sort of defeats the purpose of having it all in parts um, and the parts make it a lot easier just to spray paint one part where you don't have to tape anything up uh, except when you're gluing, but then it doesn't need to be precise, precise when you're doing it. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one, and if you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? <laughs> Come and try it. Hit that little button down below, um, and uh, tick the little like thing if you've made it this far, then um, I'm hoping I can get a little tick in the like and the subscribe, so you won't miss any of these destroyed build, plus all the other videos I put out when I can. And I will be having a also um, that's something else that's coming probably in the next two weeks is a Ender 3 V3 Plus, which is their larger one. It's like the K1 Max, but it's bed slinger. So um, it'll be interesting to get that and see if that works along with all the others to print some more droid stuff. Okay, see you later, guys. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your support. You might like one of these or one of these videos. Um, that I've made in the past, so feel free. <laughs> okay, thanks guys, bye.